So we'll start our session. Uh, till now, in the last uh, interaction that we had, we had discussed six different experiments. It included heat pipe, uh, lacked pipe, uh, natural and forced convection. Right. Uh, today we are going to see a uh, few more experiments. Uh, which are actually more practical. You are going to see these uh, more often in your uh, career, right? Uh, just to give you a glimpse of, of uh, how these experiments would be, uh, these are actually miniature sized uh, equipments. Uh, in the industry that you are going to see are much bigger uh, equipments. But principally, all of them are going to work on the same principle, be, be it for a smaller size or a bigger size. So let me just share. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So I'll just uh... so we'll discuss few more practicals. Right. So uh, one of the practical is pin fin apparatus. Now pin fin, as the name suggests, it is extended surface. Extended surfaces. So what happens is there is a wall. Uh, I hope the derivation for, for pin fin here, uh, it has been taken care of in the theory. Right. Now there is a wall which is maintained at some temperature T or let's say Tw, right? And now we need to increase the rate of heat transfer, right? This is T ambient, right? So what happens is we give a extended surface. It can be a cylinder it can be a actual surface like this where this is completely a surface which is at some temperature and then there this is the extended surface so what happens is heat travels from uh, through conduction, it travels from the wall to the extended surface here, right? It gets heated up and from here, convection takes place and heat is evolved. Now, one of the major uh, assumption taken here is maximum amount of heat transfer is happening through the surface. The cross-sectional uh, area that you are seeing the heat transfer is minimal, right? Now this is an assumption. In actual scenario, there is going to be some heat that is going to be transferred from this surface as well. But we are going to, uh, we are assuming that there is no heat transfer. This is, there, there is no heat transfer, right? So what happens is in the diagram, if you can see, this is our air tunnel. This is blower, right? The PID, this is for heater and this is for, this is the mains. Just a minute. Hello? Hello? Oh, Mazel, Mazel. So, in this particular equipment, there is an air tunnel 
and this is uh, here you will see in the actual setup i couldn't take it in uh, grab it into the picture there is a orifice and there is a youtube right this orifice will uh, when when we start the blower air will be sucked from this side right uh, and it will it will be taken out in from this particular pipe uh, when whenever there is air flow there will be a difference in uh, the two heads and from that you can calculate the q that is cd a rho under root some constant beta raised to 4 right this you have studied in uh, fluid mechanics right so here this particular thing is a heater input so what happens is in this particular tunnel there is a pipe where the here heat is provided or power is provided and temperature gradually shifts to this direct in this direction right so there are multiple thermocouples five at different locations so what the basic procedure is it consists of a pin fin fitted in a duct blower is pro provided on one side of the duct air flow rates can be varied right how it it can vary see here there is a small valve right you can increase or decrease the uh, flow rate of air right if more the flow rate more would be the convective heat transfer right and uh, this particular thing is, uh, we can calculate uh, the flow rate through the change in the heads of the youtube manometer so you, what you get you get the flow the cross sectional area of this particular tunnel you know it is given right uh, and you know uh, flow rate so q is equal to ua area you know q you know you can calculate u right this u you you can use it for calculation of nusselt number which is a function of reynolds number and prandtl number okay now we'll come to what actually happens now uh, here we uh, define the parameter m it is equal to under root of hc upon kba here h is the heat transfer coefficient c is the uh perimeter actually perimeter in the case if it is a cylindrical pipe what would be the perimeter of the surface it will be 2 pi r or pi d this perimeter kb is conductivity of the metal now this metal is aluminium and a is the cross sectional area which is pi by 4 d square right so what you have to do first thing you have to, uh, you have to switch on uh, the means once uh, uh, and let it uh, be heated for say half an hour half an hour to one hour what will happen so gradually the te the temperature of uh, of the of one side of the fin is kept at 70 or 80 right and there is a blower which is blowing uh, air onto the extended surface after a after a point there is going to be a temperature gradient that you will see this particular thing you have to measure and plot okay the same thing uh, if the blower is on it will be convective heat transfer that is forced convection otherwise it will be natural convection where the blower is not working this plate you can take it out or you can leave it as it is 
and then you'll you'll see how the temperature changes. Suppose this is x and this is temperature, right? Uh, so starting from a, a particular point, this is x, and this is our extended surface. So at x is equal to zero, you'll see maximum temperature, and as you go on decreasing, uh, as you as you go, move away from the surface, the temperature will go on decreasing. Is it clear? pin fin apparatus i'll just again give you a uh, this particular thing is a conduit from where air is sucked into right this is a blower and here there is a extended surface inside which is at a certain temp uh, one end is kept at 70 or 80 degrees celsius and blower is started and uh, after after some point there is going to be a temperature gradient that you will see it will decrease right so basically you have to find out the fin parameter and fin efficiency right this the detailed discussion has already been taken care of in the theory part right uh, which is actually effectiveness and efficiency these two things you are will have to calculate and for h it will be different for natural convection that is when blower is blower is off and h will be different for post convection that is when blower is on correct so in case of forced convection there will be ditter's bolter equation right and for uh, natural convection you will have to find out grashof's number and from grashof's number nusselt number will be equal to some constant a into grashof's into prandtl raised to something 1 by 4 or 1 by 6 correct Uh, from the cell number it will be h d by k from here you can calculate h right and you can put here and find out fin parameter and from fin parameter you can find out efficiency as well as effectiveness both the things can be found out by uh, finding out the fin parameter the next uh, experiment uh, is of single effect evaporator uh, in the theory part uh, i think there are uh, in mass transfer also you will be you will be studying single effect evaporator or multiple effect evaporator uh, this particular thing uh, i'll just give you a brief about the experimental setup now this is a tank in which uh, c, uh, 2% or 5% of CaCO3 is uh, CaCO3 solution is put in, right? At the bottom that you are seeing here is steam generator. There is a liquid level marking over here, so that we will have to always uh, keep a uh, keep the steam generator three fourth filled with water, right? So this is the steam generator. this particular thing is a shell and tube kind of arrangement where from the shell side there is steam condensing from the tube side there will be 
CaCO3 solution. Okay, so single effect evaporator. <coughs> What happens is uh, CaCO3 uh, solution from here it goes through the rotameter. This is the rotameter for CaCO3 and it is put into the uh, tube side of uh, this particular shell and tube. This is again another uh, ancillary equipment to this. Here this is a watch glass. Now watch glass why it is there? We have to maintain the level to half. Why? So that the entire tubes would be filled with CaCO3 solution. Now simple thing is heat is provided by condensing steam. Right? Steam will give out uh, latent heat of vaporization and convert it into liquid. Right, and that heat is taken up by heat is absorbed by CaCO3 solution, and obviously, CaCO3 won't uh, vaporize, so water will vaporize, and water vaporizes. The water vapor vaporize, it will go in this direction. And at the back here, there is a uh, condenser where the water vapor that are coming are condensed and collected. Behind this uh, rotameter panel, there is a tank where the condensates are collected. Okay, so basically, how will you find out uh, the now there are two three different things uh, first is capacity and another is economy capacity is the kg of water vapor produced per hour okay and economy is how much amount of water vapor is formed per kg of condensing steam right obviously for good economy if 1 kg of uh, steam is getting condensed ideally 1 kg of water should evaporate correct but that is not the case when 1 kg of steam uh, condenses some amount of heat will be spent uh, in overcoming the conductive resistance and also CP of the CaCO3 solution will also define how much uh, uh, quantity of water will evaporate. So in this particular experiment you have to find out what is the uh, capacity and what is the economy both things you'll have to find it out uh, you can just put up a very simple heat balance it will be what water vapor condensed into lambda this is the amount of heat that is given right and uh, some amount of heat M C P delta T. This delta T is for the concentrated solution plus lambda into water vapor generated. Here this is steam that we are providing from the steam generator. Right? And this is the concentrated solution. You will always see uh, there will be a natural uh, thermosiphon where if there is more amount of uh, suppose there is a uh, water molecule which is uh, at a higher temperature it will travel in up direction and it will gather itself in this particular vessel.
correct uh, the second rotameter that you are seeing over here is is basically for the cold water in the condenser in the condenser the water vapor that is generated uh, from the evaporator it gets condensed the water vapor goes from the shell side and uh, water cold water is sent through the pipes right so the basic aim is to condense maximum amount of water vapor correct now how will you find out the quantity of uh, steam that is uh, condensed there is a steam trap over here uh, are you familiar with the concept of steam trap steam is actually throttled to condense itself right and that amount of water is collected so as <coughs> so as to find out how much quantity of uh, steam got converted is it okay have you understood any questions in these two things these two experiments any questions how many people are there quite a good number any questions on the two experiments you cannot call it as experiments you are, you can call it as uh, setups right wherein you study a particular system correct we'll move ahead hello activity hello sir yes hello yes yes tell me uh, hello sir uh, please uh, tell me what is the uh, what is the what is the use of watch glass yeah uh, now what will happen suppose if i tell you that uh, the quantity of cacio3 basically watch glass is, is there so that you can see inside what is happening what is the liquid level right now the main motive of having a watch glass is the evaporator should never run on dry should never be dry there should always be some cacio3 solution in the tubes there should always be cacio3 solution in this particular circuit right what will happen if there is no cacio3 solution uh, in the shell side let me i'll just draw that this thing assume these are the different tubes three tubes right on the shell side steam is getting condensed condensing steam right and in the tubes there is cacio3 solution right now what will happen if cacio3 solution is not present in the tube it will lead to overheating correct there will be lot of steam that will be there on the outer side of the tube right and because of that there is a chance of thermal shock to the tubes correct the shell is made up of ss whereas uh, tubes are made up of copper correct so this particular watch glass is there to maintain the level of cacio3 solution in the evaporator correct understood 
so uh, during the uh, whenever you are running the setup you will see that there is, uh, the, obviously there will be decrease in the water level from time to time right uh, in the cacio3 solution level so you will have to open up this tanks uh, valve and put more of uh, cacio3 solution into the evaporator why there will be a decrease in the cacio3 level uh, cacio3 solutions level can anyone tell me material balance f is equal to d plus w f is your feed d is your distillate or vapor and w is your concentrated solution f x f is equal to d x d plus w x w means what x f is the mole fraction of C it is basically mole fraction of CaCO3, right? D X D is there any CaCO3 in uh, water vapor line? Here there is no CaCO3 because here there are, there are only water vapor. So X D will be equal to zero, and W X W will be the concentration of CaCO3 in this particular pipe which we are collecting. Correct. So it will give you the mass balance as well. Correct. So this particular thing is uh, now here. If you have to go for multiple effect evaporators, what happens is the water vapor that is generated here is taken to the shell side of. shell side of other evaporator means what see this is the first evaporator there is feed water vapor or let's say this is v and this is w right the vapor that is uh, generated from first ev uh, evaporator is given as a heat source to second there will always there will be second feed also again there will be some w which will be there and of course there will be again system v2 and that's how there is multiple effect evaporators that you see v3 w3 i hope i am clear about uh, the concept of uh, single effect evaporator and multiple effect evaporator now this can be feed forward also and feed backward also feed backward means what first feed is put to the last evaporator and from there the vapors are taken to the the concentrated liquid is taken back again to the more uh, temperature steam is it clear any questions anyone trupti are you clear with what you asked yes, yes. sir thank you sir ram Yes, sir. It is clear. It is clear, na? No? Okay. So we'll move ahead then. So coming to emissivity apparatus. Emissivity. This is a black body. These two are identical plates. This is plate one. This is plate two. Plate one and two are identical. Correct. as you can see this plate is blackened and assumed to be a black body and this is a test plate now what happens is the procedure says that 
both these uh, there is uh, coil to both uh, both the plates right same coil or similar coil these two are uh, power measurement uh, devices that meters what we see at our home and the, both these are uh, analogous to meters it calculates what is the amount of uh, power input is given to both the plates correct so what uh, procedure says that you have to heat up both the plates to a particular temperature right let's say both the plates are at 70 degrees celsius correct now since this is for black body black plate and this is for test plate okay so what will happen now at 70 degree celsius both will emit some part of their energy now this is enclosed this particular thing is enclosure is provided right so that both the plates are at same conditions right so both the plates at high temperature will emit correct so black body it has got a very high emissivity that is black for black body emissivity is always equal to 1 correct so black body uh, will emit more of energy compared to the test plate more energy emitted less energy emitted correct if more amount of energy is emitted from black body you will have to supply more of more power to the plate less power to the plate right so tb would tb is what temperature of black body or black plate TS is temperature of test plate, TD is temperature of ambient temperature actually, right? So coming back here, if you have to supply more of power to the plate, why? Because more energy will be emitted by this part, by plate 1 and less energy will be emitted by plate 2. So QS and QB are uh, Q is what? That is the power that has been provided to the black body, black plate, QB and QS, correct? So you know both these, EB is the emissivity of black body which is equal to 1, sigma is constant, AS and AB are the area of plate. Area means what? It is the area for MEC, it means surface area. Means area through which uh, radiation will occur. Correct? Now since both the plates are identical, both will have same area. So what will be there? So ES will be equal to QS by QB into TB minus TD upon TS minus TD raised to 4. Correct? You know all these, all the variables on the right hand side you are able to measure. From that you can calculate the emissivity of test plate. Right? From this you can calculate the emissivity of test plate. Is it clear? It is very simple. Uh, only thing is you will have to wait for steady state. Steady state means what? Both of them are at 70 degrees Celsius or both of them are at 80 degrees Celsius. Whatever. Right? So we are what we are uh, trying to exploit? We are trying to exploit that for a black body uh, the 
since it is a black body it will uh, radiate more of uh, heat compared to the test plate so more of heat will be required uh, by the plate to maintain its temperature correct for the test plate since its emissivity is not equal to 1 it will be less than 1 so less amount of heat will be radiated compared to the black body and uh, since less of heat is being uh, radiated so less amount of uh, heat will have to be supplied this particular phenomena where we are uh, exploiting in this particular apparatus is it clear anyone any doubts on this शिवानी अच्छा ये दे रहा है नो सर मेजरिंग द टेंपरेचर सॉरी सॉरी हाउ आर वी मेजरिंग द टेंपरेचर या आई फॉरगॉट टू टेल यू सी ऑन द ब्लैक बॉडी यू विल सी दिस देयर आर थ्री डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स दीज आर थर्मोकपल्स you have to you have to take average this is the temperature of test plate or black plate this will be the average temperature of test plate ts tb is it clear Shardul, any questions? No, sir. No, sir. This is fairly sim uh, simple experiment. Now we'll go to the plate type heat exchanger. Now I have uh, I I'll share the actual photograph, but more or less it is the same. It is analogous to the. plate and frame press right so there are two heads and in between these heads there are multiple plates so what happens is uh, here there is cross flow means what from i'll just give you a side view Now let us assume that this is cold water. Now this cold water is going to plate one three, right? And hot water. Let's say like this. This is hot water, or let's say steam, or whatever. steam if if it is steam you'll have to put it from the above so let's assume for for this instance this is hot water and this is cold water and we have to transfer heat so hot water is going to plate 4 and plate 2 and it is coming out from plate 2 cooled hot water and water cold water right so if i just put it that uh, cold water hot water and this is plate 1 2 3 and 4 right so cold water comes in in plate 1 it goes out from plate 1 and again it enters plate 3 right and from plate 3 it also it goes out right whereas hot water it will enter from plate 1 it will go out to plate 
and in plate 4 again hot water will enter and it will come out from plate 4 itself right or if I can draw a better diagram let me see So, so this is cold water. I'll color the plate which has got cold water in it. And it will come directly out. hot cold water correct now I'll put this is hot water utility it will be in plate this plate this plate and it will come out cold hot water Correct. Now how this particular thing is managed using gaskets. Can you see a black color thing on the edges? These are gaskets. Now suppose if you have to, uh, you, you don't have, uh, you don't want water to be in that particular plate. You have to put a blind uh, gasket over there right so for cold water it it is allowed to enter in this plate but but it is not allowed to enter in plate 2 right it is allowed to escape from plate 1 but it is not allowed to enter plate 2 it is allowed to enter plate 3 correct so here there will be a blind ga gasket over here And for hot water also, there will be hot water will be allowed to travel to second second plate, but it is not allowed to travel to the third plate. I hope that is clear. So there are such multiple plates, right? More the number of plates, more will be the surface area. Right, so delta T LMTD you have to find out delta T1, delta T2, delta T LMTD will be correct. Here you will uh, area you can ca calculate using the number of plates, total area will be equal to number of plates multiplied by area of one plate it will give you the total surface area through which heat is going to transfer correct so from here you know Q you know A you know delta T A how, how will you know Q? Q will be what? QH plus QC by 2 QH is what? QH is equal to the amount of heat lost by the hot water. So this is input, this is output temperature and QC is the amount of heat gained by the cold water. This is out, this is in, right? So you take an average that this is the total amount of heat that is transferred and substitute here you can get U. This is the overall 
heat transfer coefficient that you have to achieve now suppose you, uh, tomorrow you are you are given a case study or a problem arises that uh, for a particular process there was a particular uh, heat transfer coefficient that was desired and now you have to change now the process is going to change and with, with that you will require more of heat to be transferred right so in that case it uh, all you have to do is increase the number of plates and vice versa if you have to decrease the overall heat transfer coefficient you will have to decrease the number of plates one of the advantage of plate plate type heat exchanger it is compact size easy to uh, install and easier for maintenance correct it is a fairly simple thing if you know this particular q is equal to u a delta t lmtd it will be easier for you to solve this correct heat pipe uh, coming to heat pipe we have already discussed but i thought of putting a image and then explaining it to you right uh, as you know heat pipe it is a hollow tube which is lined on the inside using wick and a small amount of fluid is filled under vacuum so here this particular thing is heat pipe this is the copper pipe and this is the stainless steel pipe the material of construction of heat pipe is also stainless steel so these two are same now only difference is for heat pipe heat pipe it is hollow lined with wick and contains fluid copper pipe high thermal conductivity ss pipe not so high thermal conductivity so with logic what we can say for heat pipe now when heat is provided on one side of the pipe the liquid is vaporized and due to the pressure generated the fluid travels to the low pressure area having relatively less temperature the vapor then condenses at the point of lower temperature by emitting latent heat of vaporization the condensed liquid is uh, sorry the condensed liquid travels back to the point through wick provided by capillary action right so obviously heat pipe you will see more of heat transfer for copper pipe you there is already more heat transfer for ss pipe not so much correct now here what you have to do you have to find out you have to draw a graph of temperature versus time for all the three pipes right obviously for heat pipe let me just draw a better diagram you have to measure the temperature at point 2 so this is this is where heat is provided and this is where you have to find out temperature measured correct so for heat pipe there will be a sudden increase in temperature correct 
फॉर कॉपर पाइप देर विल बी ऑल्सो सडन इंक्रीज और नॉट सो सडन बट रिलेटिवली राइट एंड फॉर एसएस पाइप द थिंग विल बी वेरी ग्रेजुअल करेक्ट सो दिस पर्टिक्युलर अरेन्जमेंट is there when when we require rapid heat to be transferred suppose there is a reaction happening and exothermic and you want this heat to be transferred immediately otherwise it will hamper the Uh, reaction as well as the reactor right so this particular kind of arrangement is used i hope the diagram and also you will be imagining why there is a casing at point b this particular casing is provided and this is filled with water and uh, maintained at certain temperature so what will happen if now i'll just give you a cross section this is where power is given heat is generated so t1 and this is t2 so obviously t1 should be greater than t2 and as you go in this direction t1 will go on decreasing here there is a enclosure that is provided so that this particular temperature is maintained so there is always a temperature gradient which is uh, available right slowly what will happen the water will get heated up and the final temperature of water will be equal to sorry temperature of water if you keep it for 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours the temperature of water will be equal to t1 why because more of heat will travel in this direction here heat will be transferred to water and the temperature of water will go up i hope this is clear any questions over here anyone shivashish वेर there is some temperature you are giving continuously heat to this right and this is point 2 where temperature is t2 right now you have to plot a graph for how temperature t2 changes or how temperature t2 changes with time correct now this is for For heat pipe, let us take blue color. ठीक है? For heat pipe, since for heat pipe, what will happen? There is conduction plus convection. Convection of what? The liquid will vaporize and then go and condense at point two. correct so if you this is temperature at t2 right so there will be some initial temperature and when you start there is sudden spike or in very less time this is the t1 temperature level 
right? It, the time required is say T1, correct? So when you start giving heat to this per point one, and we are we are measuring T2, and we are plotting it as a function of time. So you will see the graph is much more steep, right? Because heat pipe is more efficient in transferring heat, correct? So if it is if it is more efficient, more amount of heat will travel from one point one to point two, right? Now let's take the example of copper. Now we all know copper is a very good conductor of heat, right? So again it will be at certain temperature again it will come to t1 in a very less um, number of time uh, in a less amount of time right obviously for copper pipe thermal conductivity is very high because of that there will be rapid increase in the t2 with time correct however for ss pipe ss has got for ss pipe low thermal conductivity plus no convection correct so the amount of time required to gain t1 will be more so this is t1 t3 and this will be t2 is it clear shall we Yes, sir. Okay. And another, who was asking another question? Fan out of you, sir. Nikhil. Nikhil, are you there? Nikhil Kishore. Nikhil, are you there? He is not with us. Okay, I hope you are clear with the concept of heat pipe. We'll move to vertical and horizontal condenser. Similar to the uh, single effect evaporator, I'll just give you a brief of uh, this is steam generator. Vertical condenser, horizontal condenser. Yeah, and this is rotameter. These are bypass valves, and this is the PID. Correct. So in vertical condenser for vertical condenser steam is in shell side and cold water is in tube side so if I change This is the shell and there are multiple tubes. Right? So th th there are multiple tubes here. Right? 
so on the shell side the steam is condensing and on the tube side cold water is there so obviously the amount of heat that is given will be given by mass of steam into latent heat of vaporization of steam and this particular heat will be taken up by cold water it will be mcp delta t correct delta t is what temperature of water that is going in and temperature of water that is coming out steam is going from the back here and there is a steam trap over here right so whatever the steam that is condensed we can uh, collect it so it will give us the mass of steam we know the latent heat of vaporization mass of water we can we can we measure cp we know and delta t we measure right so here you can calculate q is equal to u a delta t find out delta t lmtd right so q you know a you know delta t you know you can find out overall heat transfer coefficient right uh, and also for vertical uh, condenser there is a outside heat transfer coefficient that is given by 0.943 and some relation which is there in the uh, record you just go through the record you you'll find out as uh, for particular temperature t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 there will be some u that is overall heat transfer coefficient and then there is ho that is the outside heat transfer coefficient why because in the condenser heat is uh, steam is uh, getting deposited here right so this is a very wrong uh, port trail i'll just if it is vertical let us assume there is only one tube right shell is, uh, from the shell side steam is coming and here cold water is getting into the system so what will happen S steam will condense over here and once it's condensed due to gravity uh, it will flow down forming a film so you must have heard about drop wise and film wise condensation correct so it will form a film right so here for here there has to be some outside heat transfer coefficient outside means this outside the tube similarly for horizontal condenser this is the shell and there are multiple tubes in it correct so so here from here cold water is going in and here steam is going in right you can see here this is for cold water this is for steam okay so again here also steam will be more uh, condensing in this part and then it will fall down right so more of uh, area will be available for uh, cold water to get the heat right so here also the ho is 0.723 into some variable raised to 1 by 4 okay you just go through the theory and find out what is the oh, outside heat transfer coefficient S same procedure is for uh, horizontal condenser as well for t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 there will be some uo and ho correct 
that's what you have to do and you have to come up with a idea that how heat transfer changes with the configuration of the system if it is vertical there is going to be some change in the heat transfer for the same uh, kind of steam or same cold water uh, things are going to be different for horizontal condenser i hope i am clear in this any doubts any specific doubts regarding any of the experiment or setup experimental setup or demonstration we can call it demonstration as well because here we are not experimenting anything we are trying to understand how a particular uh, system works so any questions with the demonstration any muskan mohanish any doubts ketan no doubt rikesh rikesh any doubts no sir no sir okay so uh, all the experiments that we have discussed are there in our lab right so this is just to give you an idea about how, how all these experiments are uh, performed right a detailed procedure for experiments are, i've already put in into the uh, in the record book that i've already shared right we'll uh, keep a test on the same somewhere in the last week of december maybe uh, on these different experiments right the questions will be much more simpler and it will be more related to the fundamentals of all these experiments uh, i hope uh, you have got an idea about how uh, heat transfer practical is performed let's hope uh, you all come to the institute maybe in a month's time right so that even if we get some days we'll be able to cover all the experiments any questions any doubts regarding other experiments as well sir can you please share this ppt is in the group i'll share this ppt with you no problem okay sir thanks but i have taken the entire thing from the record itself so i sincerely suggest you to go through the record go to go through the procedure and i was just going through the record book also there are a lot of uh, mistakes right so if you are reading something and if you think that particular thing is wrong try to find out the reason because there is a very good chance that it it may be wrong there might be some uh, typing error or anything of that sort right so you go through the uh, record book and try to validate all the formulas that uh, are there right like like uh, the one i have said for uh, natural convection right for natural convection there is always grashof's number that comes into the picture right there is always a tf or tm right which is a reciprocal of some temperature at which that particular natural convection takes place because for natural convection it will be uh, you'll encounter this in two uh, demonstration first is uh, heat transfer through natural convection and second is spin fin right so the same kind of uh, methodology is followed and you have to just measure all the heat transfer practicals are much more simpler because you uh, 
all you have to do is measure correctly and then find out or analyze based on the measurements so i hope i am clear in the heat transfer practicals anyone has got any issue you can ask me any issues regarding heat transfer practicals any questions any clarification required for any experiment okay then we'll stop here and uh, maybe i'll again schedule a meeting like this only and we'll just have a discussion about uh, practicals of heat transfer maybe but so far all the all your experiments have been covered right all the experiments that are working in the lab i have covered almost all of them and uh, i hope you all are going through the uh, record book that i have shared there are a lot of uh, corrections that in the record book and i expect you to make those before you submit right whenever you will be submitting um, i'll i I'll, i'll maybe give you some uh, basic uh, measurements for all the uh, for all the experiments and i'll ask you to uh, do the calculations and come out with uh, results so these calculations will be independent right and if you go through the calculations it is much more simpler it is there in the record book all you have to do is just fill in the data and get the results right so thank you so much we'll meet soon then bye now